Oh look, an intro clip from my Home in the Earth video. Anyway, this video starts with the delivery of sandstone from a local quarry. The cost is $80 per pallet, or less than half the cost of using those stackable concrete retaining wall blocks that you can get from Home Depot. I got eight of them for my wall, along with some big ones for another project. Before I can bury the garage, I need a retaining wall to keep this dirt from falling onto this back door. But first, I need to stucco over the fox blocks. The first scratch coat layer was about 3 eighths of an inch thick. I figured I might as well do this side of the door while I'm working on it. After that first layer cured, I added a brown coat over that for about 3 quarters of an inch of total thickness. I'm now quite a bit better at stucco than I was back then, and that small sharp float that I was using was a poor choice. Then Sherry came by later and added the Blue Max waterproofing only in the areas that I planned to bury. I cleaned the dirt off the foundation, measured, and marked the wall curve. The white half inch PVC pipe is just to help me visualize that curve. Then I just got to laying stone. As with many tasks in this project, I have never done this before, so this is a journal of my own progress, not a tutorial. Of course, I had experience watching YouTube tutorials, mostly my Haddock. I'll, I'll try to tell you what I learned along the way. Here I was just starting with the nicest, flattest rocks, which happen to be the ones that the quarry always puts on the top of each pallet. Once it got dark, Finding the right rock started to become more difficult. At some other point off camera, I came back and put a drain tile in and backfilled that whole area with gravel. The pipe actually runs along the garage wall and then along the mudroom, and then down along the back of the retaining wall and out. These first few rows were pretty easy because it was easy to find nice flat rocks. I just used a level and laid them out. But now the hunt for the perfect rock was starting to get more difficult. I got up my chisel to improve some nearly perfect ones. You can see the rejects start to pile up in front of the wall, and the whole thing started to become more of a puzzle except with 50 to 100 pound puzzle pieces. I mostly sorted by thickness first, and then I would bring them to the wall and then try to puzzle after that. Here I'm trying the string level method to make sure that it was level across the whole length of the wall. It didn't seem to add much value, but at least it confirmed that the wall was already level and that using that big long spirit level was working. Working on this wall was never the main project of the day. It was always done at the end of it, another day's work as, as filler work just before sunset. Let's skip a few levels. This is my Adder Pro self-leveling laser. It has been very helpful in other jobs but I haven't produced videos of yet, but it was overkill for this wall. It again confirmed that this row was already pretty level, and then I set it aside. By this point I'd run out of easy stones, and I often needed to cut or grind to fit. Fortunately that's pretty easy with sandstone. I'm sure that the mortar in this wall will be much stronger than the stones are. I found that it was generally faster and easier to lay out a row dry, and then sort out all the fit issues, and then come back and mortar them in a second pass. Some days I would just spend a little bit of time to pick a row, and then another day I would come and mortar it.
Look at all the reject stones in this scene. I'd estimate that I ended up with about two full tons out of eight of these rejects. So about 25%. I'll end up using them, just not in this wall. Every few rows we would raise this makeshift platform just by extending the legs of scrap lumber. Since the wall is leaning away from the platform, it felt very safe. This little clip was lost and found, it should have probably gone in that copper ridge cap video, but it illustrates that these were both side jobs, not critical path, and mostly got done a little bit at a time when I found the time. It's hard to tell with the fisheye lens of the GoPro, but this wall is actually leaning back intentionally. It was now getting to the point where I was getting concerned about making it any taller before backfilling because I didn't want it to fall back in toward the garage. Skipping ahead, and we now have the first layer of backfill sand behind the wall. I'm not worried about it tipping back anymore, so I can continue on. I should note that we also put horizontal layers of used carpet in to make the sand behind the wall more stable. I'll talk about that in the burial video. Nearing the end now, as I put in the last few stones up on top of the edge, I wanted like a free-form, natural-looking edge. I also put a bunch more pea stone and another drain tile to control the water near the top of the wall, right at the bottom edge of that vinyl umbrella. Here's another pic showing the lean of the wall. This helps it to resist the earth load. Weighing seven or eight tons probably helps too. Here's a recent video of the current state. My hand for scale. I didn't say final state because this wall still needs its joints grouted and some other cleanup. The landscaping around it also needs a lot of work and maybe a bit of ivy or something to cover up the worst bits. And of course, the wall of the house still needs work too. Here it is seen from the top, put a little bit of an edge along here, and we'll also need a safety rail up here just to keep anyone from falling off. Next video, we'll start forming up the tower and mezzanine walls.